What's up guys, Blair Chaos here once more with Let's Play Victoria 2 as the French. In the last part, we... I forget what we did. <laughs> Extension Persia, that was it. We expanded into Persia, we also got a bit more colonization done. Which, you can argue either way could be good or bad, but still, that's beside the point. Oh, we also, we also went to war with Britain, again. Well, with France, we always go to war with Britain. And Russia is currently doing the Russian colonial conquest of British British. Yeah. Thanks, game. That's a uh, very descriptive <laughs> Um, So, here's the plan. France lacks manpower still. So, we're going to go after more of China. I love going for China, if you couldn't tell. <laughs> There's tons there for you. Oh, Christ, if I don't mute my own headset, would be nice. Sorry about that. Now, it's saying about calling in allies. I can handle China on my own at this point. I've got the technology. China doesn't. China has the manpower. There's also, you know, I don't want to call them in. So I kind of dismissed my alliance partner. <laughs> I no longer have a great power ally. You'll see some stuff going on back now. Hello, Suzu. Hello, China. Uh, you can actually ask for the alliance again. And they're not like, oh, you can't answer the alliance. Uh, people don't join because they get. To be fair, a lot of these probably couldn't make it. <laughs> and a lot of them are just idiots. Regardless, China. Uh, China is going to be easier than before. And it's mostly because we've already got a foothold. Because we're in defensive territory, we just wait for them to siege up and we pile on them. We've got plenty of stacks there. I mean, we've got... That's... Uh, 902. Yeah, 102 to there. And Austria wants lines. No, bugger off. Austria, you're a death trap. So, they have the manpower. Denmark, hello. But we have the technology to cut them down. I mean, just watch, you'll see loads of these guys just melt away as we get fighting. And this is why I love fighting on civs. <laughs> if they haven't got at least flintlock rifles, by the way, more flu, typical. Yeah, they haven't got at least flintlock rifles, you will tear them a new one. I mean, there's 132 down there, right? No, sorry, 170, and it's killing us quickly. We roll a 9. <laughs> Thanks, game, the one time we roll a 9. I really do need to fix these stacks, that is not good, so you know, sensor reinforcements over there. There's only a 12 stack, but that 12 stack's gonna make a big difference. Oh, let's, you know, ship more troops, ship more troops. I'm gonna send over our elite guys, and that shows the army. They don't want the army, thank you. This looks hard? It isn't. <laughs> it looks like there's a lot of power there. Look at the stack we've just wiped out. Yeah, that was a 50. Against 57? We effectively have, I believe it's like, plus 3 defense over them, I think. So, plus 2 or plus 3. Um, we also have plus 2 attack over them and shorter combat width. You might be wondering, you know, what does combat width have to do with this? Uh, instead of EU4, where you want a wider front so you can cover the entire line, here you have a, sh a smaller front you can cover with less men. Because uh, they actually start trench warfare. It's kind of like um, I'm trying to think of the best way to explain it. As you go along, cav becomes less and less useful. That's literally the easiest way I can put it. And yes, China did take land off me. That's literally the easiest way I can put it. As soon as machine guns come along, the cav is dead. As an idea, they don't figure that out till World War One. Yeah, about that. But look at this stack. We're just cutting it down like. Nobody's been in this. In turn, two, 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 one. Watch that sink. And two, two, one, seven. They don't have any art artillery. We were actually overdone in artillery, to be fair. That's why I need to fix the stacks, because you should never go over your artillery of infantry. It, it, you don't want artillery in the front line. That's all you know. I'm saying on that front. We're, we're still going to win this. I mean, they're staging up my entire port, uh, all my port line. And yeah, we just 290,000. Here's the fun part. We can piece out of that. <laughs> we got the 50 war score from those three battles. That's the point where China will, you know, they know they're screwed. I mean, hell, we, we took a lot of damage, but it's China. They took hell of a lot more damage than us. But they may have more, but the... the it's weird, the way this game works out war score it doesn't really make that much sense when you look at it. Uh, the idea is that it 
Uh, it goes off how much has happened in battle and how much conquest has happened. And the best bit is, um, the AI will look at it and go, okay, we've lost so many battles up to 50 war score. If you beat them in one big battle and get the 50, they'll be sad of that. In, like, if it's reasonable. Like, I think it's like 10 leeway or something like that. And, yeah, the Eastern question. Do we um, make Russia renounce the title? Uh, this is basically... What's the guy? I'm just signing. So, the... Short version of this is the Ottoman Empire is fading as great power, and it's now been called the Sick Man of Europe. Russia is adopting the title of Defender of the Christian, of Eastern Christian Christendom. In other words, it's the leader of the Orthodox faith. And people are saying, okay, are we going? Okay, do we want Russia to have the title, or do we let them, or do we contest it? The thing is, if you do, we have other concerns. You lose prestige. I don't know why. Like, do people like the Ottomans as a great power? There's no downside to this. Well, there is, you know, you, you, I gained like 0.5 prestige for that. I didn't renounce the title, but, you know, you also get a CV on them. I am not going to war with Russia. No. <laughs> Every time I've gone to war with Russia, it's ended badly. You think I'm going to war with Russia now? No. No. <laughs> it's not going to happen. I think I'm actually learning at this point. Nope, nope, I don't know. <laughs> raised my hopes past me. Raised my hopes. I will eventually figure all this out. I promise. Eventually. I don't know when. <laughs> We're 8th in the world in military score. Where's that first? Sorry, it's a bit blurred on my screen, so I can't really tell. Looks like 1st, 3rd, and 8th. I can't be right. Hmm, whatever it is. Still, with Britain being battered as many times as it has, it's sixth in the world. Oh, it's, it's fourth in the world. Eh, okay, I can understand that then, because Russia's mobilised, Britain's mobilised. Yeah, once they demobilise, it'll be fair. Uh, we can't intervene in great powers. Well, we could intervene on the British side if we were friendly with any of its miners. We're not, though. And I don't really fancy going to war with Russia. I like the idea of the British being knocked down a few pegs. Even if it is mostly because we are number two in the world and we're going to get to number one soon. Can you blame me? <laughs> now, I make, um... Uh, the thing is, like, I'm looking at this, uh, past, future me kind of knows. Well, I say future me, hello. Um, I probably should have got breach loaders. And I'll kind of, this kind of needs a bit of explanation. National Imperialism is very good for making your wars go faster. If you've got a miner that has, I believe it's four or less states, you could you get the established protector at CB, um, so you get to fabricate established protector at CB on them, instead of, um, I believe it's like two, one, excuse me a second, I can actually look it up while I'm doing this, but it speeds up your wars, makes it so you can take miners a lot faster. It also makes it so you can fabricate those wars a lot quicker. So it's never a bad thing to get. I mean, it you can get it basically helps you get into wars a lot faster. It also unlocks, I call it the second wave of colonialism because you know it's you, it, and it gives you missions to civilize at the same time, and you've got to go through missions to civilize to get um, state and government sorry to get missions to civilize. So it, it it always works out uh, better, in a sense. Here we go. Must have less than two states, so one state, or less than five states if the attacker is a great power. Okay, that makes sense. So I've got the Casperas. It's also a very good CB to get in general, because if you get in a war... Let's say I go to War of China. Now, I if I've got no infamy at all, like I'm at base, which is, you know, zero, and I go to War of China. I can then use the uh, established protector against Korea, against Dainam, against any of its miners that have less than uh, four or less states. Yeah. That's, nice. That's a nice thing. I actually kind of like the idea, to be honest. And the Temperance League. Okay, Temperance League is 
you know, if we don't want to drink, we don't want to... It's sins, basically. Now, one side actually hurt, uh, hurts you, but gives you less mercy, I believe it is. Uh, if you pass me, I'll look it up soon. I'll look at it soon. But, um, well, the other side actually helps out your industries, your... Uh, I, I, I might call them exploitation. <laughs> I've been playing too much Endless Legend. But it's kind of a good thing to get, I think, anyway. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's there we go. Yeah, won't uh, yeah, if you establish it you get prestige, everything needs. A pop mercy goes up there. I like the idea. I mean it's free prestige. Sure puts a pop mercy, but that's not much of a difference, like 0 0.01 a day. Which yeah, hundred days is one. But it's not gonna go up that quick. You can easily negate that. So what else am I thinking of? I kinda want to Oh well, there's no way we get Bavaria. Prussia's nearly severed it. I kind of want to go to war with Prussia. Then I kind of don't at the same time. I know if I go to war with Prussia, it's got a better military than me, by far. I mean, I've been losing manpower left, right, and centre just because of the whole... Um, uh, what was I going to say? Uh, I've been losing manpower because of just being France. I mean, look, I'm losing 3k right now. Well, I lost 3k over the past 30 days now. It's actually getting better now. There we go, we're actually in plus. France is really in a bad spot, to be fair. And I kind of feel sort of sorry. Oh, hey, come here. There's national imperialism. I didn't need to do that. <laughs> it's like, wait, what? Okay, I'm going to explain now. I haven't upgraded my artillery. The thing is, artillery... I just... I prefer engineers. I know artillery is awesome. It's actually better than... Uh, engineers. The thing is, though, to me, uh, it doesn't really justify the cost. Also, national imperialism gives you the value of the king's decision. Uh, because, you know, e Egypt's got Luxor, and we can exert pressure upon them in order to do the value of the kings, basically. Do, go to Luxor and try and find the tomb, tomb come in. It slows your infamy decay by 0.01. It doesn't sound like a lot, but when your base is 0.1, you start losing 0.09. Now, over 10 months, that's 0.09 as opposed to 1. It takes a bit longer to get the, um, the things you need. I'm sorry, not the things you need. Um, it takes a bit longer to... <sighs> takes a bit longer to get those... Um, prestige. No, prestige. To get the infamy limit. There we go. Get the infamy you need in order to get a new war going. Also, hello, second wave of, of, of colonization. Can't touch Africa. I'm looking around the entire world here, like, trying to find stuff. Because there's nothing in Oceania. There's stuff in Africa if you go through Ethiopia. There's, like, two states. And I'm not looking at Persia. There's stuff you can get from Persia. And because we got this before Russia, Oh yes, and Russia is actually still busy, they might not have any colonial points. There's a fun thing. We just feared the, the Japanese before the Americans. <laughs> All hail the French stuff. That actually unlocks the decision for the Japanese, where they can... Oh look, it's the other side of... it's Iraq. Yeah, I'm sorry, right? um, the Japanese actually get a decision now in order to... Um, it's something like restore the Meiji Dynasty, or something like that. Oh yeah, it's breach of those okay. Um, it you can actually start early. Well, there's, there's like two points of thing. The plan is Westernize and join the game, and towards the latter half, like I want to say mid, um, the mid 1880s, it should have Westernized. Where and you can actually speed it up where, you know, this westernization just occurs a hell of a lot faster. The problem is this has a cost. It makes it so your population militancy goes through the roof for time. Like, I think it's like plus five if you do it early and plus four conscious if you do it early. And if you do it without going through that, then you have, I think it's like plus uh, two, no, plus three and plus two, I think. I don't know, I had to do a game as Japan one time and see what it was like, but Japan is actually a fun place to get be when you're doing this game. 
because you've got access to all this. If you do a, um, if you like, it's probably the best time to conquer Asia because you're right next door to it. You know, it's it's gonna be easier. Um, also, uncivs when they westernize, when they become civilized nations, they get a core on all the land they own, and this is a. Ah, this is a this is a procedure, isn't it? Is it? Yes, procedure. Um, if you civilize as a uncivilized nation, you get cores on all the land you own, regardless of if it was yours to begin with, or mm, don't destroy my laptop, or wasn't. Doesn't sound like a lot, but bear in mind, you get a, a conquest CB cost you 22 infamy. You get it. I think it's like 20% faster. I can't even save my life. There's also. Travel the best way to put this. Uh, there's also. Just a straight out. Yeah, you know, it's easy again. I know it's 80%, sorry. Yeah, I'll look at this stuff. 22. Because I don't want to get this wrong and look like a, tw look like a twat. <laughs> but again, wouldn't be the first time. It's uh, also that commerce raid is called the Canada, and I have loads of spare cash. Let's put the tax down the put on the middle class. Yay! Yeah, it's um, I do I love this by the way. I can actually put the tax down that far. I can actually I can not tax the middle class and the rich. <laughs> ah, it's eight percent speed bonus. Go. So bear in mind that's like um. Every 10 days, you get 8 days bonus. Yeah. Generally speaking, all uncivilized nations are around like the border of Europe, uh, counting Russian, counting Ottomans. So, yeah, it kind of works out like that. It doesn't really get named uh, partially the Western, it's just like 30%, so that's a good way to gauge if it is. Uh, the only exceptions to the rule are Orange and Transvaal. And there are some nations that actually started westernized towards the beginning of the game. Uh, hmm. If you really cry me, it's the only unciv nation in Europe, but then that's, you know. Regardless, I can't remember what I'm doing here. I think I'm planning something. Was I planning something? I was working, I'm um, like, I was there, so I noticed I was like 16 points behind the UK. As soon as they peace out, oh, I must have already peaced out, girls. As soon as they stop with the uh, war. No, I, they have stopped the war. Damn it. Ah, I'm pushed out of the UK. God damn it. I guess on the good side point, it is, um. It's useful, I guess. I mean. The, oh, a crisis. Here we go. First crisis of the game. And it is. Four. Do, do, do. Greece wants land back from off the Ottomans. So, as the first crisis of the game, I need to explain this. One of the new mechanics they brought in is if you are the lone defender, as in you def you back the in this case the Ottomans, and no one else backs you, you get prestige. If someone backs in this case Greece, the claimant. And no one and no one backs the other the attacker. No, sorry, hang on. Let me try that again. <clears throat> when you got two sides, you've got the attacker and defender. So let's say the attacker is the one who wants the land, okay? If someone backs them and no one backs the defender, the attacker gets the thing done automatically. They get the land. So in this case, Greece would automatically get I think it's the Aegean Islands, in this case. And if you are defending them alone. You get a prestige bonus for, in, the, in Paradox's words, being gutsy. I have never seen this uh, because I've never been a lone defender. But I have, but it's, you know. You get the prestige whatever happens. That's kind of the way they've done it. The bright side is this actually gives you a ton of leeway to work with. It actually makes uh, the world's going to change a lot if people don't like the Ottomans. And that's probably the best bit. There's actually things that are going to happen from Crisis instead of them just going, Crisis Fizz. It's really, really good. Uh, I've actually got a 
basically looking at revolt risk right now, aren't I? Yeah. Yeah, I've got revolts, but I'm using the, the rebellion over in Taipei in Zhejiang is more likely. Is um sorry, less likely, but there's more going to join it. Cause logic. Gotta love the Chinese, folks. <laughs> Oh, by the way, I'm looking at Iceland because uh, polar bears. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I've shared the screenshot where. Um, what is it? Jan Mayan uh, in Iceland has like 100% polar bears in my whole business. Uh, I freaking love that screenshot. I don't know why. It's so amu amusing. So, this crisis is probably going to fizz out. Oh, we've got prestige for. Um, 27 kilometers from Versailles to Props on the one man airship. That's kind of good. It's kind of good. In this case, I don't think Prussia is going to support Austria. It's actually in Prussia's interest not to because it weakens Austria's position. No, actually, no, it's in Prussia's interest to support them but make it fizz out because then Austria loses the prestige. Then again, the, well, you got a CB for that because of humiliated CB. I don't know. Prussia, it's in your interest to get Austria as weak as possible so you can sphere them and then get them when you do uh, Germany. Because, you know, you can actually get Germany as part of Prussia. If you can get Austria as part of, Prussia, of Germany, sorry. Uh, if you do it right. I mean, I've done it in my campaign. It's freaking awesome. Love it. <laughs> Brilliant. And what's going on here? I think I'm just going over the world right now. Okay. Uh, so... Honestly, I'm thinking like I don't know where I want to take this campaign right now. Oh, there we go. Austria was humiliated. They're still a great power, the number seven in the world. We are not going to knock them out if we do prestige. We, if Prussia wants to knock them out, they've got to go to war. They've got to get that those infantry cut down. Having said that, and they're going chemistry, which is actually very good. Gets us uh, more pops if they get the right inventions. Breach loads always goes one. If Prussia, if Austria gets weak enough, um, the best way to do it is actually just siege them up, get them in warfare. The problem is, the Prussians aren't going to go to war with Austria until they form the North German Federation, and they can't until they have my core. Yeah. Because they need, I think it's like all the German cores in order to form the North German Federation. And then after that, it's free harass for Germany. Actually, I can look that one up because I've got the thing open. Um. Sorry, that looks like actually more task. That's like as well Victoria as well. The thing is, they've actually got Holstein under the banner, and it's actually helping them get um, Denmark. And I want to keep Denmark because then they actually have a hard time when it goes to war. If I think it's Holstein, which you know, hmm. So you need to have. Do -do -do. All North German states, oh, everyone that's in Prussia's sphere to begin with, Holstein, Hanover, and Saxony. Holstein is a puppet of Denmark. Hanover starts in the UK sphere, breaks free from the coronation Queen Victoria, and Saxony is in Austria's sphere. Now, um, you also need Luxembourg, but Luxembourg's easy. North German Federation and the South German Federation are, are the South German Federation, really? Okay. They are the two most powerful nations on Earth when they come around. Or well, it's not one of them. Uh, the thing is, though, forming them is a hard part. You've got to do so much legwork. I mean, hell, I'm having tr I had trouble myself doing it. Um, <laughs> I just spit the wrong people. 99% <laughs> of the time, Prussia will not form Greater Germany. They need to batter Austria down. It will never happen. They focus too much on getting off Germany, then go from there to Germany. And I think I'm calling that apart there, so yeah. Anyway, I've been, uh, I've been to that guy, you've been you. Do you want me to get next time? Focus and bye! <laughs>